Right before the NBA took a brief siesta in March, The Battle of Los Angeles Part 3 aired from Staples Center, starring bionic forwards LeBron James and Kawhi Leonard. The two cyborgs have had diverging defensive reputations over the years, with Kawhi making five straight all-D teams and LeBron last earning that honor in Miami. So how do these superstars compare on defense this season? Let's go to the tape. Kawhi opened on LeBron and the Lakers ran him through a number of screens. Kawhi goes under and that length helps him against bigger forwards like this, but he's called the claw for a reason. Leonard's 7-3 wingspan helps him pester the ball, and that threat forces LeBron to turn his back here and fizzles the action a bit. Leonard does this to plenty of initiators, and his hands are still disruptive. Added weight has zapped some of his quickness, but his jabs at the basketball are accurate and sometimes potent, here playing tether ball with half the spurs, which forces a desperate shot. He still has that crossover blocker, throwing a claw out if you change sides in front of him. This is some 4D chess pulling the dribbler's hand off the ball, and you do not want him close enough to kiss your cheek with that long reach. There's the anti-cross technique. Those mitts finish this play by ripping Nikola Jokic for the steal. But quickness can leave him in the dust now, and even slower players like Shake Milton can get an angle because Kawhi doesn't cover ground like he used to. Here, the loping Brandon Ingram gets a step, and you can see Kawhi's lack of acceleration when recovering in these spots, but the hands still save the day on this one. Here, Kawhi hops around a screen, but his little baby steps prevent him from getting back in the play. And on this one, Leonard looks to step around the screen, but then Luka's just too quick for him and gets downhill for damage. Leonard's screen navigation technique is pretty classic, stepping around and dipping the shoulder, and if he stays connected, it's dangerous because the claws come out again. LeBron, on the other hand, often hops into different positions when screened. Kawhi gets a step, but James takes a steep angle and recovers. Instead of dipping his shoulder around screens, his constant repositioning makes it harder to screen him directly. And sometimes he just pops in front of the screen, blowing up this play here after tripping. LeBron also uses his power to displace screeners, something we didn't see in that Clippers game. And when he's locked in and hopping into players, he can stay with plenty of ball handlers like this. James's man defense these days is more about positioning and feints. He closes to the shooter, then reacts really well to the step back, but stays down and chugs his feet laterally. Late in the Clippers game, he was locked in against Kawhi, an instant reaction to the cross, then reading another cross from the way Leonard cups the dribble. That hops him into a perfect stance, and James still covers ground well with his hips turned like this, and he's remarkable at not biting on up fakes. Later in the fourth, it's almost the exact same sequence, but Kawhi goes step back, and that's just too good. LeBron's feet are slower now, but so much of his success is reading tendencies and reacting instantly. Against Giannis, he spots the change of direction with this leg plant, this is like reading poker tells in milliseconds, then swivels to a steep angle and finishes with this Karl Malone swipe down. He doesn't have Kawhi's hands, but LeBron does get people with that swipe regularly. Unlike Kawhi, James still accelerates well, recovering to bust up Leonard's dribble from behind here. Although anticipating plays early does backfire sometimes. Here, he reads a handoff and can't quite recover. And he senses Lonzo pulling up on this, but isn't quick enough to stay with his change of pace. But I think we underestimate some of LeBron's tricks and how insanely gifted his reaction time is. And he's also just huge. He spun around here, but stalks his man from the side, which is effective given his height. Against the Clippers, he did over-anticipate a play, so Kawhi just improvised. Incredibly, later in the game, Kawhi became preoccupied with setting up for a screen, and so LeBron dusted him. Leonard can be so intimidating on the ball that occasionally teams will send him into the corner for a timeout, as the Thunder did during much of their March meeting this year, sort of an extreme way to declaw Kawhi. OKC wasn't just avoiding his on-ball havoc, but his help from the middle of the floor. This digging down from the top is a Kawhi special. He's one of the best ever at this because of his long arms, huge hands, and quick jabbing steps toward his prey. 
This makes it dangerous to drive into his airspace, and turning your back is not advised. Late in the LA battle, Kawhi was ready to pounce, but LeBron felt him coming, turned to shield the ball, and spat out a brilliant pass to the active Anthony Davis. Speaking of passes, Leonard also jumps them frequently from this area of the court. He's just longer than most people realize, swatting this out of the air with a giant paw, and he anticipates kickouts like this and sells out to get them. The man's hands are made of stickum. Kawhi's in the 86th percentile in forced turnovers this season, but his gambles do miss sometimes. He sells out on post entries a lot against bigger players, and in the Lakers game played this kickout pass way too hard, missing a dangerous cut from Davis. LeBron has a gambler's streak too. He'll try to jump these little passes or even take a swipe at the ball in similar situations. And reading the quarterback's eyes works for him quite a bit, but LeBron's mental computer also reads situations. So he knows Ben Simmons doesn't think the corner is an option, Thus, he rotates to the top and it's a pick six the other way, or a, a pick seven with the and one. In the Clippers game, LeBron used the clock against Lou Williams at the end of the quarter, knowing he was low on time, which led to a deflection and a neutered possession. He also sabotaged Kawhi at the end of the half with his back turned. His swipe move connects, but Kawhi holds on with his iron vice grip and the possession ends with a wobbly shot. LeBron's help reads like this are his most valuable assets still as a defender, knowing where to be based on personnel on the court. He's big enough to still offer rim protection. He was listed at 6'9 without shoes this year, and despite a decline in vertical athleticism, still contests at the rim well. This was an incredible save block from the other side of the hoop, and he can still make small guards look like children, deciding he was going to block this on either side of the rim. He's even looking to take more charges these days when protecting the hoop, which adds value by either forcing turnovers or dissuading finishers when they see his large frame. Kawhi's not quite as vertical around the rim, not really contesting LeBron here, and he impacts plays occasionally from the side like this. That's a nice little late help at the hoop, and he slid over a handful of times in a similar way in my film study this year. He's not looking to arrive super early and take charges like LeBron, but his help responsibilities are pretty sound in these spots, tagging players and returning to close out on the outside here, and this is just a great defensive sequence. Leonard does occasionally develop a little tunnel vision, focusing in on his man without realizing rim help has become the more pressing issue for his team. The impact metrics view LeBron as one of the five best wing defenders in the league this year, and they think Leonard has been the best wing defender in the game. These numbers are fuzzier than their offensive counterparts, but they're strong positive signals for a reason. Both players are versatile, switchable defenders with a variety of skills, and in Kawhi's case, his point of attack defense is near the top of the league, and his hands are still the gold standard. He'll still rebounds like this all the time. He's not quite the post defender LeBron is, giving up size to bigger attackers, whereas James can string together clinics against almost anyone in the league. And because he's a walking scouting report, LeBron can redirect teammates, regularly scramming out guards like this to shore up potential weaknesses. James still idles in spots at times. He loves to play mind games and let weaker shooters launch as a resting place. And without Anthony Davis in Houston, he clearly conserved energy on defense to power up the offense. But his effort has been significantly higher this year, and it's common for him to give up his body like this in key spots. I don't know about you, but it's not really obvious to me who's better here. LeBron's backline responsibilities tend to be more important, but Kawhi's able to slow down a variety of pick and roll operators while still helping in other spots. A deciding factor for me is that LeBron can't dial it in all the time anymore, and so in 2020, I see Kawhi Leonard as an all-defensive candidate as a forward, and LeBron James just a step below that. There is additional video on Kawhi and LeBron at patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball, along with historical stats, articles, and a whole lot more. Thanks so much for all of your support, and as always, I hope you're having a great day.